He's about ready to race. I don't know if you can hear us. We'll be dumping it in later. Well, I was absolutely right. You can't hear a thing. So now let's measure the velocity of a car. Let's pick a car. And as it comes around right there, we're going to track it around. Some more cars are coming by. And as they go by, or they go all the way around the track. And I go all the way around. There's a spot. Here comes a car. Here it comes. All right. Now I figured this out ahead of time. And uh, it was exactly 17 seconds. It's amazing. It was exact. We want to do velocity. It's distance over time. So we measure the distance. And this particular track is 5 eighths of a mile. And uh, it goes all the way around 5 eighths of a mile. We measured from the start to the stop to the exact same point. And we came up with 17 seconds. So a velocity is distance over time. It's 5 eighths of a mile over 17 seconds. And now we want to somehow convert seconds into hours because miles per second doesn't really mean a lot to us. So we want a conversion. And we know that 3,600 seconds equals one hour. That's 60 minutes times 60 seconds. So if we use that as our conversion factor and we can uh, put it on top, 3,600 seconds per hour, and then we've got seconds above and seconds below. Anything divided by itself is one. They essentially cancel out. So now we do the uh, math, 5 times 3,600 and 8 times 17. And let's see if 5 times 3,600 is 18,000. And the units left on top would be what? Miles. And then 8 times 17 times 1 uh, across the bottom would uh, turn into 136. And the units would be hours. So it's uh, 18,000 miles divided by 136 hours. And if you divide it out, it turns out to be uh, 132 miles per hour. That's really good. Okay, let's do another situation. Now, you'll notice a pickup truck in the front. That's the pace car. They all go around the track at about 50, 60 miles an hour. They get in position. And once they get around to the other side of the track, then the race starts. So we're going to have an interesting situation here. I started my clock when they uh, passed the same marker. Half of the race, they're going to be going very slow. On the other half, they're picking up speed. You can hear them coming. Oh, I love that Doppler effect. Here they come. All right. I stopped my clock. So I started, and they went through half the race, and they did it pretty slow, 50, 60. And then they pick it up. They accelerate. They start getting up to speed. So we have a slow section and a fast section. How do we deal with this? Well, the truth is, the equation solves for what's known as average velocity. The average velocity is the total distance traveled divided by the total time. Technically, this is average speed, but we'll get to that later. So it's still 5 eighths of a mile, and there's still 3,600 seconds to an hour. Now, this is uh, going to be constant for every time the, the car goes around the track. People at the racetrack, they don't talk in terms of 5 eighths of a mile in, in velocity. They talk in terms of time because everything else is the same. So There's about 21.13 seconds for this particular lap. So we work our math, and we decide it's, uh, once again, 18,000. So that number is always going to be the same. Cancel out our seconds. We're left with miles on top. And then we, uh, 8 times 1 times 21.13 comes 169.04 hours. We do our division, and we come up with about 106 miles per hour, the average velocity. All right, here we go. We got one more situation. This is kind of, see that yellow flag? That means there's an accident somewhere, and everybody all around the track has to slow down. There's Mr. Joya, number 9. Okay, we're going to time him. I'm going to try to track him all the way around. It's going slow enough that I think I can kind of guess where he's going to be. Okay, he's behind all that stuff, but I'm, I'm kind of guessing his speed. Eh, well, I, I gave up because of the truck and all that stuff. Here comes the stuff. Close in. Here it comes. There's one of the safety vehicles. Let's get that white pickup truck. That's the pace car. It goes out. It goes in front of everybody so that they, they know what speed they should be going at. And uh, Okay, here comes Mr. Joya. Right there. There he is. Okay. All right, stop this. 
they took a long time to go around. All right, now you're beginning to see how if you use the same numbers over and over again, you use what's called a, a fundamental conversion. You just do all that math. 5 times 3,600 divided by 8. And then you come up with the time for this one. And this took 37 seconds to go around. Let's do the math ourselves. I'm skipping all the steps. Here we go. It's about 59 miles an hour for safety purposes. All right, now let's do one with a complete lap at full speed. Here they go. There's Mr. Joya, number nine. And he's moving right along there. I've moved to a different position in the track, so I get a better view of the overall race. Okay, and here he is. He's coming back around. All right, we stop the time, and we came up with a time of 17 seconds. Go do the math. We've done already. Of course, in racing, you can always have a situation where the cars aren't moving at all. You really hate that one. You kind of avoid that situation. Or in some cases, going in the opposite direction. Here's something really neat. I'm going to deal with this on another video. See the car on the right, the yellow one? It's got a big chunk of foam on its roof. And the safety crew is going to come take it off. And that's a protective barrier. We'll talk about that later. Well, thanks a lot. really want to thank uh, Stephen Joya and his dad and the Oswego Speedway.